Yes. Are you going to take some classes next week instead of EAP? Oh, you have no EAP? Yeah. Interesting. I'll think about it. Huh. No, I, I, I have to say no. <laughs> 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 but we'll to be honest, Christy, I have so many things to catch up on, like um, yeah. the, the physics workbook. I want to copy the questions into a Word document so I can print them. Um, I also want to make a exam preparation book of exam questions. So, I'll no, it's okay. And we're we're about the chemistry too. I mean, she might be. Yeah, she's not gonna do that. And physics, I mean, physics, math, we're not gonna do that. And we're free. No. Yeah. What you talking about the chemistry? The lab report? No, no, I mean, well, how can I learn going to be you? We are already like, we have them. Oh my goodness. That might be true, Monica, for normal students, but that isn't true for engineering students. <laughs> Continuing. <laughs> oh, you made it. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hmm? Why? You made it. Why it? Oh, you didn't uh, fall off your skateboard and die. Yeah. What's wrong? Nothing. Uh, where did we stop last time? Did we just do the double slit? We didn't do anything after that. Oh no, we did. Um, yeah. Oh yeah, I was talking about this. Um, I already drew the. I already drew the diagram yesterday of how the interference pattern is formed by the two waves. So. Now on to a new thing. Uh, a diffraction grating. Got that diffraction grating? Does anybody, Jerry, Lee, do you know what a diffraction grating is? No. It's just uh, a piece of plastic or paper with many long, narrow holes. Um, and the reason we care about a diffraction grating is because we can use it to split light, or well, rather, uh, oh yeah, no split light. We can make one source become two sources. So here is a diffraction grating. And all you can see from the picture, all it is is just a piece of metal or plastic with lots of narrow little holes in it. So the purpose is when the light comes into this, it can split between two holes and then you can make two sources of light. In other words, uh, before you draw that, if I go back to uh, the Young's experiment, this, I drew it as two slits, but really this is like a big, well not a big, but a piece of plastic with many, many slits, and the light just hits in between two of them. Uh, so that's called a diffraction grating. Very simple, very simple. Just a piece of plastic with some holes in it. Here we go. So if you can write this, we don't have to write all of it, but write down what it is. To split the light into two light sources.
Capaz. No. Continue. I said you didn't have to write everything. No, no, no. Okay. No? Okay. Right, so some terms. So we have a slit separation D. And this is the distance between the two sources. So in, in my picture here, it's the distance between the holes. That's called the slit separation. Now actually, do you know what? I think I want to change these letters because in the formula book I think they use different letters. So let me just open the formula book so I can get the right letters. Uh, where the fudge? Where's my formula book? Syllabus? No. Okay, let's go. Du, 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 du. Search. No, I'm not. <laughs> this laptop doesn't have search. Um, okay. Let's just see. MC UK files IFY uh, framework physics. Aha, from the book. Actually, you have this at the back of your... Okay, let's see. Uh, where is it? Waves, math, physics, light, there's Snell's law, magnetic fields, capacitors, electric... Ah, here we go. Okay, so... Uh oh, wait, hang on. Oh, good. No, that is the same letter. They use a D and a lambda. I think it's. I think it's just the other ones in S, and I think I used an X. Let me just change that. Yeah. Uh, 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 S. Small D and big D. Uh huh. S. Oh no, I do have it right. Okay. Looks good. Back to the physics. So these two formulas I'm about to do with you, just like Snell's formula yesterday, uh, they're in the formula book under interference, which is nice. Okay. Uh, which row were we at? About here we are. So the first one is the D, which I said is the separation. Uh, the next one is the fringe separation S, and that's the distance between the fringes or the the spots on the screen. The angle theta, which is the angle the wave makes with the normal, uh, and the distance of the screen, which is capital D, and that's the distance from the two sources of the screen, and the order, which is M. So in a moment I'll draw exactly what these are on the picture, but if you can just write their names and letters down, that would be great. Yeah. yeah. Um, fringe separation, you want to use S or X? <sighs> Let me just check the form of the book again. It's uh -oh. X. X? Where's X? S. Oh, S, yeah, and I did use S, didn't I? You use S. S? 
That's an S, isn't it? Yeah. I haven't lost my mind. And that's an S there, isn't it? Isn't it X? <laughs> it isn't it X? I thought X too. Okay, my eyes were ruined. So me too. You just zoom in, Nisha. Zoom in, sure, okay. Is that X? It looks like X. Oh, is it? Oh, it looks like X. Like that. So we're sure about the uh -oh. You two, you two <coughs> wear glasses, don't you? Can you please put them on. <laughs> All right. I would, but I want to have a big lunch today because it's Friday. So I will be good and resist. It's Friday. Yes, exactly. So Friday means big lunch. Yeah. Why is special on Friday? Friday? You want to be big lunch. If you have to ask that question, I'm just not going to answer it. It's obvious what's special about Friday. It's Friday. Yeah. <laughs> it's Friday. Check it's Friday. Friday. Just mm -hmm. Friday? Yeah. If you want, every day is Friday. <laughs> that would <laughs> be nice. Every day is weekend. So what do you want from that? Chips. 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 And oh. chicken. Oh, thank you. That's all right. No. <laughs> Club orange. No beer. Okay, do you have that? Yeah. Yep. Okay. So I said uh, we'll draw exactly what this is here. So, you have your two sources and the distance here to here that's D and then what you have here is the screen and the distance from here to there that's big D and then uh, here we have a bright spot and then here and then here and then here, and then here, and so on. So these are called uh, fringe separations, and these are F. Now, please note, the F here is actually changing. So the F is, is a variable, it changes, but because the change is actually quite small, it is acceptable to say that S is constant. 
It gets bigger, yeah. Now I'll talk more about that with the two formulas in a moment. Um, so these are called the orders. So this is zero, this one is one, this one is minus one, this one is minus two, this one is two, etc., etc. And then lastly, the angle here to here. So this, for example, this one here you could call it theta, you could even call it theta 2 because it's the angle for the second order. You know, and then this one here, if I drew one way down here, come on, there you go. This one here could be theta for, say, minus 4. Maybe that's, maybe that's 3 and then maybe that's 4 there, something like that. So the theta is this angle here. So I think it would be good if you add this to your definitions. This is what the letters represent. And we'll look at the two formulas for this double slit experiment. Yeah. yeah. Um, the S is like price for the price for. Yeah. Yeah. Two, one, zero, minus one, and two. Oh, sorry, this of course should be a minus two. Two, Got that? No. Not yet? Okay. Yeah? Rock and roll? Yeah. yeah? Okay. Uh, no, no rocking and rolling. So you're going to give us a work for that? Yeah. No. I'm going to print out the worksheets <laughs> that I've typed <laughs> up already. I mean, I'll upload them to Moodle as well. And they're going to be the same questions that you're doing anyways. But just so you can have printed copies if you want to add them to your folder. Okay. Uh, I need to continue. Yes, yes. Okay. So we have two formulas here, uh, and they are n lambda equals d sine theta. And let me just show you that in the formula book too. Oh, uh, see, I wrote it. Uh, no, same thing. N lambda equals d sine theta, and then the other one is s is roughly lambda. Uh, s is roughly lambda capital D over small d. Now, uh, Chris, you were talking about how I said the S changes. So you notice that this formula, I am reminding you that this is only roughly true because these S's actually are different. Uh, and here, this formula is actually exactly right. Now, interestingly, in the exam, although this is only a approximation, it's actually quite a good one. And both formulas you can use fine in the exam, no problem. So sometimes in the question there's actually two formulas, or you could use actually both. Um, like if you think about it in this one here, you could find the theta easily. But this one here you could find the theta because what you could do is you, you know maybe, you maybe know the, uh, the D here, and so you could find the S and then use trigonometry to get the angle. In other words, both formulas are fine to use. Okay, um, and they're both in the form of the book, which is good because each year they add more formulas to the formula book. 
So like in the first year there was no formulas, 10 years ago, and then they had some formulas, and then they put in more formulas. So like for example, um, I don't, yeah, last year this formula strangely wasn't in the formula book, but this one was. That was a bit strange. Now both of them are. Yeah. Uh, okay, so can you add these please? Continue. You got them? Yeah. Right, let's have a look at our first one. Now there's a lot here, so I'll draw it. A speaker is inside a room and it's humming at 2 kilohertz. Uh, so here's the room. Here's the speaker. And this is a 2 kilohertz. They are Oh, there's two of them, sorry. Uh, and they're one meter apart. One meter apart. A boy walks down the hall with the doors... Oh, sorry. Stupid picture. Mm -hmm. This is the room. And then there's two doors. Good, and then this is the hall. Okay, and they're one meter apart. Okay, one meter apart. Uh, a boy walks down the hall with the doors on his left. He notices that as he walks by the room, the sound from the speaker gets louder and quieter. So the boy is here, and as he walks down the hall, he hears the sound gets loud and quiet, then loud and quiet. He's surprised because what he thought would happen was it should get loud, 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 loudest, quite, 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 quieter, you know. But instead, he hears the sound, it's like it's going, someone's turning this volume up, down, up, down, up, down, so it's quite surprising. Uh, the hall he's walking on is two meters wide, so here to here is two meters. Uh, okay, and also because this is sound, we know the speed is 330 meters per second. Okay, so question A. What is the lambda? Okay, I'll give you, uh, well, I don't even think we need a minute. Um, how can we get the lambda? What formula? What form you can give us the lambda? And not remember we know the f and we know the v. So we could say v equals f lambda. So lambda is v over f. Yeah, what's that, Andrew? Thank you. Uh, zero point one three six meters. Okay, b. Yeah. Oh, sorry, did you type in 2000 or 2200? Sorry. 0 0.165. 0 0.165. 330. Oh my goodness! Friday. <sighs> yeah. One week. Long, long week. I know. Don't worry. I've not forgotten this. It's all I was thinking about this morning. <laughs> I'm sitting at the computer going, yeah, just one more week. Okay, B. How far apart are the peaks? So what's going to happen here is you're going to get a fringe pattern because this is like the double slit experiment. You have one sound, but it splits into two. And you get a pattern here on the wall. 
So this one here, this is the, uh, the loudest one actually, it's zero, but this is also loud, and 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 so on. That's minus one, as you know, and so on, and so on. I'll just put the dots in. N equals zero, we call the one in the middle of the two, we call that one N equals zero. And we call this one one, two, three, and this minus one, minus two, minus three. Part B, I want to know how far apart are the peaks of the sound wave? So, in other words, how far apart are these? So what letter is that? S. S, which is about equal to lambda D over D. Yeah. Now, uh, we know the lambda. And what's the big D here? Yeah, think carefully, what is it? It is 2, good. And the small D? 1. 0 0.33 meters. Okay, C. What is the angle of the second order? So that's this one here. So what's the angle for this one here? So we use the other formula. Uh, N lambda. lambda, I'll write down actually, N lambda equals D sine theta. So theta equals sine inverse n lambda over d1. Okay, so what's that angle, please? Yeah. Second order n equal 1 or n equal 2. Two. We, we call the zero one the zero order, so we, can't, we start counting from zero. So whenever they say the second order, they mean n equals 2. We never ask for the zero order because the angle is always zero because it's uh, exactly in the middle. Thank you. Okay. D. What is the maximum order? Hint, theta should be less than 90. So in other words, when do these stop? Okay, we'll do that on the side. So the way I think about it is like this. N lambda equals d sine theta so n equals uh, d over lambda sine theta can i change the d no can i change the lambda no it's the theta that's changing mm -hmm. and at some point we can't make the theta any bigger what's the biggest we could make theta 90. 90. We can't even actually make 90 because 90 would have the sound never reaching the wall. We certainly couldn't have more than 90. So, in other words, the most that this could be is 1. one. But it can never actually be 1. Can it? No. Because no. that would have the sound going oh. parallel. Yeah. So, what we'll say is the maximum value of n must be less than, and I'll write the word here, strict. Strictly less than d over lambda. It absolutely cannot equal it or be greater than it. Uh, what is d over lambda in this one? The d over lambda is uh, 0 0.1, no, 1 over 0 0.165. What's that? So, because it has to be strictly less than 6.06, .06, and of course, it has to be uh, uh, it has to be a whole number. This is a six. By the way, if the answer was 6.99, what would you round it to? You would definitely not. Yes. So, what is the over lambda is the uh, whole number? Oh, ho, interesting. What happens if by accident this worked out to be a whole number? It's never happened before in a question. Um, I would still say this must be strictly less than... Oh, goodness, that's interesting. 
I see in my head I'm thinking what would they do in the exam and what is the right answer and I don't know if that's going to be the same thing. I feel like in the exam they would just you know use the number but if you really 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 think about it maybe you should use the number before that because you can never actually get uh, like if it was exactly six you would never get the six because the six is up here then at infinity it's not achievable just hope that doesn't happen in the exam I, I think that would be very mean if they did that to you in the exam what I would do in the exam I would cover my bets I would say I would write my answer as uh, n equals five unless you allow this angle uh, unless you allow 90 degrees then n equals 6 you know, so I'd write both down to get the mark yeah no good question actually yeah but don't worry that has not happened yet do you know what I'd probably cheat a little bit actually and earlier I might change my round in a little bit so that later when I calculate it just pushes it a little bit off the six. Sure. Yes. Um for C Yeah. If I use the triangle rules, I get different answers. Yes. Yes, correct. You will get a different answer. Because if you're gonna be super technical about it in C, I use the formula Oh. What are you talking about? C should be the same answer. What triangle did you use? Um Two meter, zero by six, six meter, and then tangent. Oh, hang on, I'll draw that in a second. Do you have this? Mm -hmm. Hang on, okay. Tell me what you did, Lee. What am I drawing? A triangle? Yeah. Yeah, okay. This side? Two meter. This side? Zero by six, six. How'd you get that? Two S. Yeah, that's the difference. This is equal to two S, but this is only roughly zero point six, six. Because remember, I said the S is changing. In fact, the true answer would be slightly less than <coughs> 0.66. So the reason your answer is different is because of this. But in the exam, you would still get the full marks because both formulas are acceptable. But if we're going to be technical about it, this formula here is more accurate than this formula. In fact, this formula is 100% accurate, and this one's only maybe like 95% accurate. And because you had to use the result from that formula in making your triangle, it's the reason why. Now, out of interest, how different was the answer? Uh, 18.26. Yeah, so it's a full, it's a full degree less. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So like, actually, yeah. So 95% accurate. So you have about a 1% error or a 5% error in using that formula. Uh, okay. Next. How long until the boy no longer hears the homes? Now, did I tell you how fast he's walking? Oh, by how long actually I meant the I meant the distance. So, in other words, at what point for for what amount of distance will he hear the music? Okay. So, how many orders did we say there were? Was it six? Six orders. So just be careful, if there was only uh, one order, the distance would be like this, S and S, because that would be 0, 1 and minus 1. If there were two orders, it would be uh, S, 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 right? That's 0, 1, 2, minus 1, minus 2. This is if there was one order, two orders. If there are three orders, it would be... One, two, three, one, two, three, S, 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 one, two, three, four, five, six, if there's three. So if there's six orders, we get what's happening here, it'll, there'll be a 12 S. So just take uh, the S and multiply it by 12, and that's the answer for part, oh sorry, thank you, 0 0.33 times 12, and what's that? Four meters, is it? About. 3.96 meters. How, how do we know how many orders? 
Did you give it in the first place? Ah, no, that's what we had to calculate a moment ago. The maximum order. The reason I made this question was I really wanted to make the point that this interference pattern happens for all waves, not just uh, sound and light. And then you realise if it happens for all waves, then it also happens for radio waves too. And actually that can be a problem in your home. When you have all these different waves in your home, you could have situations perhaps where one wave might have an effect of cancelling another wave or interfering with it. The, uh, the way that this is avoided, like on your Wi-Fi, um, for the interference pattern to, to work like this, these waves need to be coherent, which means they have to have the same wavelength. Now, if we're talking about an electromagnetic wave, Remember we said the V is a constant, it's C. So C equals F lambda. So I said the lambdas have to be the same for the Wi-Fi. But that's the same thing as saying the F has to be the same. Because um, the, the, they must multiply to make the same C. So what a lot of Wi-Fi routers do, they actually have, I think, 12 different frequencies they work on. 12 different channels, they call it. I think these are all slightly different frequencies. So channel 1 is the lowest frequency and then it goes up to channel 12. And in this way it can help. So like if your neighbor's Wi-Fi is quite powerful and they use channel 2, then you just need to set it to a different channel so that your their is not interfering with yours. Yeah. Um, okay. Let's continue. Ah, great. That was just the one example. Uh, now, before you do that question, I just want to give you an uh, interesting, which I didn't tell you last time, interesting use of um, destructive interference. I told you about the uh, sound in the factory and how I think they do this on the airplane as well. But another place where this is used is on a, a CD. So your CD, actually, if you were to look at the surface of it, it would look like this. Uh, it would be raised, dropped, raised, 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 drop. And this is a 1, this is a 0, this is a 1, a 1, a 1, 0. You get the idea of what's happening here, right? And this is obviously spinning very fast. So how does the CD read it? Uh, reads it. It uses a laser. Let me try and draw this. Uh, if I can get this right. Oh my uh. Yeah, yeah. No, but I, th this is if you look at the the top of it from the side. Yeah. So this here, uh, Jerry. It's actually lots and lots of rings, so I'm just looking at one of the rings from the side. Yes, I know see these circle. Yes, don't <laughs> worry. Uh, okay, so what was I saying? Oh yeah, so it shines at uh, two light rays down on it, two lasers, um, and they're. Uh, if I get this right, yeah. Oh, hang on, let me. Just draw the light rays in first. Okay. There we go. And then they... I'll just have them shine straight back up. Yeah. But I'll just have them go straight up to make it easier in my picture. Okay. So just to be clear, this one sends out the light, and this one receives it. So I'll call this one S1, S2, and this one Receiver 1, Receiver 2. Yep. Now, 
these two waves they're coherent and the difference between their lengths is a uh, half a wavelength is the difference between their lengths so that means here oh sorry I drew that wrong apologies I didn't need to have two I meant to have one like this okay. alright there you go receiver S1 S2 okay now the difference here as I was saying is half a wavelength so you know something interesting happens here here the path difference uh, is half a wavelength so what happens here they cancel actually I drew this picture wrong again don't worry, just get, I'll get it, don't worry. No, no. Oh, how did they draw this? <laughs> let me think, let me think. Ah. Flip, I can't remember. And <laughs> no, did you? Hang on, hang on. If you just give me a second, I might remember. No. No. Let me think. No, let me think. Oh, yeah, okay. Uh, I have it now, I remember. Now, it's not going to be a beautiful picture, but uh, you get the idea. Right. Here we are again. And <laughs> let me think. Just let me think. Yeah. Okay. I got it now. It is. Sorry. It is interesting, isn't it? Lee, look, Lee. I have it now. <laughs> So, what happens, this is the way the CD player works, okay? It sends uh, a light out in two different directions. It sends one here to the receiver, and then another one here to the receiver. One goes down to the CD, and the other one goes straight across. Now, you notice that this here is always the same length. It doesn't change. But this one here changes length. Because if there's a zero here, then it's a little bit longer. But what happens if there wasn't a zero? What if this was a 1? Then it would be shorter. It would only be like... Uh, like this. Now, the way this is designed is that in the first case, in the green one, if there's a, a 0, then you make the path difference... Yeah, is lambda over 2. The difference between the red and the green will be lambda over 2. And in the second case, when it hits a 1, then these two here, the path difference will be zero. Or two lambda or four lambda, whatever, but it's the it'll meet crest will meet a crest uh rather than that. So then what will happen is the receiver will sometimes get a light signal and sometimes not. Because if you have red uh, the red one here and the green one here if the wavelength difference is lambda over 2, what happens when they meet here? They completely cancel and there's no light. But in the case of the 1 here, uh, when it hits the top, it meets with the crest of the red one and then you get uh, light here. So this is how the CD works. It works by putting two waves together and sometimes they're constructive and sometimes they're destructive. And when they're constructive, that makes a 1 and when they're destructive, that makes a zero. And because it's using light, this is why you can read it so quickly. 
So this can be spinning really fast because this is just shining light down on it. It's not mechanical, you know what I mean? It's not like it has to move to read it. It's just continuously shining light. And you know, maybe you have something like a current here. And if this is on, uh, maybe it lets the current pass. And then if it's closed, then the current doesn't pa uh, won't pass. So then you can have your signal going along here to the processor or wherever it needs to go. So this is how a CD works. Oh, and there's no light in there. Huh? There's no light in there. No, there is light inside the CD. Uh, and they actually use uh, a, a red light, and they actually use a diamond, I think, to focus the light. A tiny, 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 tiny diamond is used inside of it. And um, the Yeah, because there, this, there is the light here. It has its own light. It, it shines a little laser light on it. Yeah. And this is how, um, how do you make a CD? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you, what verb do you use to make a CD? Yeah. Burn it, yeah. Don't. So what happens is when you buy a new CD, in the beginning it's all one. And it's the same as what I just drew, except you just use a more powerful light. In fact, you use the light so powerful that you burn a hole into the CD. So this is why it's actually called burning, because you are burning holes into the surface of the CD. Oh. Yeah. Now, I don't know how it works when you can rewrite the CD, because how do you fill the hole back in? And I think what's happened with the rewrite the CD, you notice on the box it sometimes says something like, you can rewrite this CD 1,000 times. I think what's happening is you actually have... 1,000 layers, and uh, when you need to write on the CD again, it burns off the top layer, and then burns onto a new layer. So I think this is why CDs, you can't keep rewriting on them, I think. Yeah? Anyways, nobody uses CDs anymore, but I just thought you might find it interesting. I do. You do? No, I don't. But, um, I just do. <laughs> for me, Useful for the Xbox. A lot of these Xboxes and uh, wait, what do you mean the CDs? Yeah. Oh, that's the same idea. So what is the difference between the Blu-ray discs? The only difference I think is that in the Blu-ray discs they must be better able to make the holes smaller, so you can get more holes on the surface, which means more ones and zeros. I think that's all. And they might also use some other ways to get more information on it, like a uh, uh, more advanced sort of... Because I've heard of DVDs that have two layers, so maybe if you shine the light at a different frequency, you can get into holes that are on a bottom layer. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. It's the same principle, though. You're just shining into holes. That's all. Yeah. And by the way, before we go, do you know how it works for your hard drive in your computer? It's not like this. What is the hard drive? The hard drive. The hard drive on your computer. Hard yeah, the hard disk, yeah. The hard disk looks like a CD, but instead of having holes on it, you have tiny, 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 tiny little magnets. And the little magnets can either point up, or they can point down. So if you were to look at it, it looks like this. And this is a north south, north south, south north maybe, north south. And then all you need to do is have some other magnet on the top. So you have like a north here and a south here. So in this case it will be repelled and here repelled and here attracted and here attracted and that's all. And this can spin by very fast and it has the same effect. But of course you're not burning anything. So you can, you can just flip these upside down when you need to change them. So it's why a hard disk would last longer than a CD. But again, for the same reason, you can only do it so many times. Because eventually the magnetic field will uh, collapse. Uh, and what is causing the magnetic field to collapse? Does anybody know? It's actually the Earth's magnetic field interfering with it. 
So this is why hard disks last 10 to 20 years and then all the data is lost because these are slowly being uh, influenced by the Earth's magnetic field and eventually all of these will just line up with the Earth's magnetic field, meaning you lose all the data. For these? <laughs> I don't know actually. You might be able to, but then there's a second problem. This disc is spinning on a motor, and eventually this motor will break. So although you might make the magnets last longer, it could stop spinning. What's a what now? Ask me, don't be shy. What's a hard disk? Yeah, I don't know, this is like a scursion. That's the inside.